Welcome back to Set the Trend Podcast, the podcast that we talk about everything culturally. Um, soul music, um, street sounds, street sounds especially. We love street sounds and we love street sounds history. Anything that's a part of that, we discuss it right here. Ray is here. Ray? Ray? Is that going with Ray this week? Ray, Ray, Ray is here. Ray's here with my co-hosts and presenters. Reggie Heavy Stars, how are you, sir? Yeah, I'm not too bad. Oh, I'm in a great mood, sir. Great mood. Very oh, shut happy. Up. Today. Shut Very up. happy. Shut up. Um, anyway, apart from that, is everything okay? Yeah. Listen, three becomes one, mate. Happy. Oh, there was so, three plus four. <coughs> anyway, listen, he, four he's, points. he's talking about his rubbish team, Arsenal. Anyway, oh. let's just get on to more happier topics. He's Dunder. Should oh gosh, should I just like, should I should I just should I just <laughs> sidestep him and say Reggie? It was a good one, wasn't it? It was a good one. <laughs> I forgot I forgot I've got two gooners on my side. I left the right side of me. Oh my day. Oh, Jude, oh, oh my gosh, you lot are so Yeah, we're happy. But how are you then? Yeah, we're happy. What's that mean? Well, I'm I'm fine. Yeah, I'm yeah. fine. <laughs> I'm looking forward to today's podcast because we yeah. have um uh, what, what what do we call them? Um, um, the, the culture's very first power couple. Ooh, power couple. Okay. Because I don't know if there's any other <coughs> Mr. and Mrs. Well, in our <coughs> event business. We don't really see them, do we? <laughs> <laughs> there, there's we many Mr. and Mrs., but we just don't see them. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't. So on that note, yeah, we'll say there isn't. Yes, because... <laughs> I was going to say, look, oh, no. look, 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 look. No, but they're not actually... Um, these two are bona fide event promoters. Um, okay, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not saying that Lolly isn't. Don't get me wrong. Mix it up. Mix it up. Mix it up. Ingrid, yeah, Ingrid but Ingrid. 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 yeah, but they. But I don't think that they. are Well, they're the first high profile. Okay, that, well, we've got the time. that I know, mm-hmm. basically. Okay. Um, and it's nice to have them in the studio. First time they've been on camera. Um, and it's wonderful to talk some history with our guest Brian Roadrunner and Sandra Roadrunner. Okay, <laughs> aka, AKA yeah. I'll stick to the me myself and I part. <laughs> AKA me myself. There's and a split I. in the camp already. Comes <laughs> <laughs> to the late night promoting. Yeah. Um, it's nice to have you here to talk some of your history because you've been a part of um, the culture for about twenty odd, twenty what? Twenty about twenty three years, or maybe longer. About twenty three years. 24, 24 this year. 24 years. I'm and a you, Liverpool supporter, by the way. Oh, you're what? So, so you're Liverpool supporter. Oh, okay. So you feel my pain. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you got into the business, and you're and you're unique because you have a DJ, as far as I know. So you're not a DJ. Yeah, he was. He um, was a DJ in the beginning. He was. <laughs> people think people do think oh, I am a DJ or I was a DJ, but he wasn't. He I wasn't. Never was. Wasn't. You saw a a gap in the market. And you decided to flyering was your job, Fly, flyering and making people and promoting other people's events. And you're one of the annoying people that used to put packs, oh, no. the plastic packs, on people's windscreens yeah. <laughs> with dances packed. When, when it when it when when it was a good wow. week, it was that high. <laughs> wow, yeah, mm. weight in gold. Mm. And um, you mm-hmm. also used to stand up. Used to do. You used to stand outside clubs, but not so yeah. much, was it? It was more. You, you was doing more cars, um, more 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 cars. Um, posters, I did hand posters, posters, yeah, the street posters, yeah, um, stuff. And on the no, we won't go there because there might be someone from the council watching. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you. <laughs> so how did you get into that anyway? But do you know what? I started the promoting thing first. Mm. So that's how that's how I came into the to promoting. My background really is, I came into this circuit real late. My background is, I was one of the original solids. So like 15, I used to not go to school. I was going Crackers. Mm-hmm. I was going Global Village, um, 100 Club. So I'm, I'm from the old school, the real mm-hmm. hardcore solid. So me coming to this circuit was a real late stage. Um, then most of my friends kind of just drifted back into that circuit. Um, and then when I came into the circuit, I kind of like, I like the music. And so I'll be honest with you, just one day I just thought, you know what I mean? I want to give it a go. So I'd be out of Sonic Shoes, so 20, 29th of July, 
2000, me and Wayne Anthony, we started the first in South London drinks free. We were like, you paid £15 and the drinks was free. You just drink as much as you want. 15 that was quid. A... Did you make any money out of that? Do you know, um, <laughs> did your bar run out? No. That was one of your things, isn't it? Your bar yeah. can't run out. No, nah, can't run But oh. it, it's messy. It's, it, it, it's, it is messy. Because there's a lot of half-open bottles and stuff. Yeah. Like it's, it's, it's not, there's a lot of drinks that don't get drunk. Mm. There's only so much you can drink in so many hours, isn't it? And they try. But yeah. when you go and then clear up after, the wastage is huge. Because we still continued that dance once I met Brian as well. Yeah. Once messy. <laughs> so I didn't... I like that and um, so I started promoting, so we started promoting, we started doing a lot of venues like Torch, um, Earl's Wine Bar, uh, Bermito's in um, Dalston, so, so we started doing, so we did quite a bit. Um, were were they I, successful? Yeah, yeah, And um, but then I just took sick, um, so I just, I went quiet and then when I came back out, I think it was just something, I wanted, I don't know what it was, um, I think it was about me. I wanted to hit the market, but wasn't too sure um, of what market I wanted to, to, to reach out to. Um, so then I thought, let me just try giving out some. I think what it was, I was when I was going out, I was handing out flyers. People see me at a club and like, what are you doing? And I just said, oh, I'm just giving out my flyer. So then someone else would say like, oh, can you get, can you give up my flyer? And that's how really it all started. And I think the person what gave the name Roadrunner was Jerry Bascom, because I think he was one of the first ones. He used to see me everywhere. What are you doing? What are you doing? And all I was doing was just standing outside clubs, just giving flyers for my dance. And then the other promoters would say like, boy, I've seen you here, I've seen you there, I've seen you there. What about if I pay you to do it? I never even, never thought about distribution then. And I thought, wow, like, he's giving me this, he's giving me that, he's giving me that. When I looked at it, I, like Ray said, the packs was that thick. <laughs> when I looked at the money I was making, so in the end, and then Jerry just doing, Jerry was, was the one what really encouraged me. He said, call it Roadrunner, and I just, okay. So I just <coughs> did little paper slips. Then when I, the money was making, making, then I was able to do like flyer slip like that. And that's so, how how much, so how much back, back in the day, if I wanted to put my flight, because you did it per thousand. Or yeah, or 20 yeah. pounds, like 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. 20 pounds per thousand. I started 20 pounds, mm. then 25, yeah. You wouldn't believe it, it only went up. Recently, Co after COVID, Recently. Well, just before, yeah. before COVID, after COVID, you I think just no, after COVID, after I think it was actually. Yeah. So it's, it would like been yeah. it had been like I started Roadrunner about two thousand and five, so it'd been twenty five pound ever since then. Wow, and you haven't increased it. I, I I've only now. it's only last or when COVID, after COVID, COVID, oh, after we, just COVID increased, we increased. Yeah. yeah. So what's that many years is that? So it's Lawrence. I've increased it. Yeah. yeah. Should be. Is there any part of London that that you haven't covered? No, I've even gone out like Luton, Watford. Mm -hmm. um, mm. Might go places like Reading. So I, I, no, Reading. Yeah, yeah. Covered some ground. I've you? covered some ground. Mm. I'm interested to know about the going back to <coughs> you starting in that um, kind of like what we would call soul scene. Why didn't you choose to use a lot of those promoters or and and capitalize off them from the flyering point of view? Do you know what? True. I, do you know what? I've never. Um, that's a good question. I, I, I can't even. You know, I can't even answer. I just. Well, I mean, I was in. I was in the, the heart of it. All the you know the hardcore solid stuff. Mm. Um, then I then I dropped out. Right. Um, and then the film, well, I think when it's time to go back into it, I lost contact with a lot of people. Mm. And then my and then my brothers then were like in sounds. I can't remember what sounds they were. They were in sounds, and they then started taking me to some different kind of clubs, started getting into the reggae clubs, things like that. Then this, little, this circuit, and I've just got a feel for it. And I, I knew a lot of people really in that circuit, so I kind of mm. just found the attachment. And then before you know, I just started making trends. Sandra, you just said, um, <laughs> that's a good question. Might have made more more money if it was on the other scene. Yeah. What's the difference between the two, two scenes and, Do you know what? and the money I, side I, of things? I always said, if I knew what I knew now, what I knew then, I probably would have switched in terms of which community we do raves for. One, they'd start earlier. One, they would finish earlier. And two, the ticket sales would be <laughs> quicker. <laughs> it's just, it's a different culture, isn't it? What's, what's the difference between so, the two cultures? We rave late. Mm -hmm. We like late rave, late finish. No guarantee there's any ticket sales. Whereas in the opposite community, whether that be white, Asian or whatever, for me personally, I think there's more support from the community. 
and they just buy the tickets, they come, there's no stigma, no one's standing up looking at each other from the sidelines, waiting for the first one to bust a dance move, <laughs> the middle way empty, they just dance, just, they just enjoy the night. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very different they're culture, easy to isn't please, it? Isn't they? They're just, they just different. appreciate whatever music's yeah. being played. They come back yeah. to enjoy themselves. Very, very different. Yeah. I did, when I was working corporate, I used to do all of our corporate functions as well. So all the, and it's so different. So I used to use our DJs on our, on what I used to do. I couldn't even get them to eat. They would be dancing the whole time, <laughs> and I'd have to say to them, "You need to slow the music down because I need to get them to eat because otherwise, the end of the night's carnage, isn't it? Yes. Drinking with no food, mm. and yeah." It's, a, it's very different. I think it's very different. No, I being... totally agree with you. I mean, uh, when I was in Supertone um, doing and playing the sound system, I was also moonlighting up mm. at um, uh, Islington and King's Road, playing a lot of the, mm. what you would call the other scene, playing Sorry. exactly the same music. No, but mm. the, the funny thing is I was playing exactly what I would play in the normal dances, mm. but to a totally different audience, mm. obviously more money. <laughs> From a DJ perspective, but the vibe, yeah, like what you said, and yeah. I've never understood this. I mean, what do you think it is that, as an event promoter, what do you think it is about people um, being on a dance floor, entering a dance, and not being that kind of like Tracy straight to the front, middle of the floor dancing? W what do you think it is? Why do you think that we don't do that? I don't know. I just think we're too, maybe we're a bit too stush, wanting <laughs> to look at each other rather than. Just go out and enjoy your night. I don't know. I can't really put my finger right on it. Because even the times I do it, I'm like, so what's, what is wrong with the dance? If you've got a great setting, you've got a good atmosphere, good venues, I don't get what takes us so long to warm up. Because half the time, the dance is warming up quite close to the end. <laughs> you know what I mean? It really is. And I, I, don't, I don't really know why. It's probably our generation, because when you think it's back, our mum, if it? you think back back in the days of our mums and dads' days, they just go out and just get on with it. Yeah, and I can't even. You know I mean, I it's just our gener, it's our generation. I can't comment our generation. On back in the day because I weren't a raver, so I've come into this scene very, very late. I didn't. Oasis never saw me. Shinola saw me probably twice. I was never a raver. Seventh so Day Adventist. I'm an only child. All oh, right. I so am. I'm, 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 well, only but child. we're gonna go into your background later. So, yeah. Um, so I wasn't a raver because you're a. You're an event director or event manager. Which one of those was you? I'm a project manager now. But yeah, but, but they, I was an event manager. Yeah, yeah, and that was for Excel. So yeah, corporately. The, yeah. Cor corporate again. So you came mm. in with a different insight to most mm. of what we are used to. Because yeah. obviously, mm. we our kind of framework mm. is very it's very flexible. It's not slapdash. Slapdash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Warehouses, yeah. blues dances, mm -hmm. um, clubs mm -hmm. maybe ain't of that kind of standard. Mm -hmm. And obviously you come mm -hmm. in with an eye for detail, with your health and safety cap on. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this should be mm -hmm. here and that should be there. And probably, I suppose, in your events business within EXO, you were seeing a lot of production work that mm -hmm. we weren't making use of mm -hmm. at all in mm -hmm. our culture. Even we don't use a lot of production work in what we do, to be honest, because as you know, Ray, it's expensive. So if you want to take things to a whole nother level, yeah. make sure you've got those extra pennies because one camera, two camera, lighting, Screens. that's a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a whole nother level. So once you decide to go down that road, you have to make sure you know the whole internet's in it because mm -hmm. one camera means one cameraman. Lighting means someone else is managing that lighting. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's all, the add-ons mm -hmm. can be huge, mm -hmm. can be huge. So, so, when did, so when did you become a... A couple, unit. as in events. <laughs> I bet Roadrunner. No. <laughs> Wait, take that pack off my car. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, 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 I use these services to be no. honest with you. When I was, because I started that really late. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. But I'm <laughs> doing. I started that quite late. Um. <laughs> and um, I, I, I was doing some promotions with some friends, um, and at the time, I was doing a lot of. Um, venue finding as well so I don't even remember back in them days I was with probably Jenny McKenzie we right, do a lot yeah. of venue stuff yeah. so um he he rang me because on 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 I think my flyer it had sophisticated venues finder and mm. he called me about a venue 
Um, and as you can tell, Brian has quite a young sounding voice. So when he called me, <laughs> well, I like, kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I literally, yeah, I literally threw in the towel. Like, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't cater for the youngsters yeah, kind of thing. I said to him, he was just like, I ain't young. I was like, mm, you sound really young. I was like, so I, I went to one of his events to start with. And it was a young, and it was a young event. That one was a young event. But um, yeah, I went to one of his events to start with, to be honest with you. Yeah. So then you started um, a relationship in a way. But yeah. when did you actually get into the event? So when was it? Because you were Quite still doing soon. your club stuff, right? So yeah. Yeah. did you come to Sandra and say... Well, do you know what I noticed? Because I went to a couple of events because he was doing house parties. He was doing clubs. He was doing a bit of a bit of everything. But no one ever knew who he was. So I'd watch and I'd be like... Everyone be like, No one knew who me, myself and I was. No one who knew who Brian was. And I kept saying to him, why do people not know who you are? He said, oh, I prefer it that way. I went, no, that's not good. No, it wasn't, I didn't think it was good. I'm like, mm -hmm. if you're putting on a dance and it's a successful dance, you want people to know who is the sex behind where they went that night or whatever. Um, <clears throat> and I took a little while to drum into his head that you need to make people know who you are a little bit. I think but, been but, about... but before we go any further, yeah. like, how did me, myself and I become, because it, was it just literally because it was only you? Do you know what? So I started... Um, I did various different promotions with different promoters, different DJs. And I think me, myself and I just means like, it is like a one, it is me, myself and I. And it, I, think, I think for me, I had like one dream, one vision. And I think, I think because I didn't meet anybody who had the kind of dreams and visions, what I kind of had. So I wanted to look at a name because first of all, I started off as um, uh, men, in, uh, men Incorporated, Men mm. at Large. Mm -hmm. So because obviously there was, me and others, but I wanted something what could identify solely as me. And I was just one day I was just sitting down and I was just writing all kind of things. And I just came up, well, it is just me. And then there's there's myself and then there's I. And that's how it came up. And then one day I just came me, myself and I. And I knew a guy what does designing. And I said to him, look, I'm going to call myself me, myself and I. Can you do me a logo? And hence why he came up with this, that logo. And, and from then, I just fell in love with it and me, myself and I was a one man and that promotion. Was when, and when did you start your first promotion as me, myself and I? Um, 20, 20, 20th of March, 2004. 2004, so you're 20 years old this yeah. year? Yeah, as me, myself and I. Remember, I started it before mm. that, but me, me, myself and I, yeah, was born the 20th of March, 2004. And what were some of those early dreams and visions that you had? Do you know what? Um, I wanted to, I wanted to take, another reason why I came into this, obviously I wanted to create an impact, and I believe I have, and what I, the impact is, I want to be creative, because I look at this entertainment as a kind of creative business. So one of the things I used to do, like I started off the drinks free, I started off the dance, um, <coughs> Udair wins, it was turnaround dances back in the day, mm -hmm. the early stages. Um, I've done murder mystery weekends, no one ever, so really we would, and then, you come along, but at the time, no black people were doing murder mystery yeah, weekends. Murder mystery. I was the only black company so, in the whole of the UK. Explain a little bit of what the murder mystery weekends was all about. So I would be, for instance, we hire a hotel. So like we start off like Nottingham Hotel and it was right next door to the castle. Um, hire professional actors. We used to hire professionals so that we could still participate. So people used to think we knew the ins and outs. All we do is set the theme. But once we set the theme, we could just get inclusive into it as much as our guests. So we'd split up. So he'd go onto one table with a set of guests. I'll go with another set of guests. Brian is very competitive. I watched him literally take a rugby tackle a woman out one day. Just what? I couldn't even believe it myself. I literally, we were, I was so dumbstruck, I couldn't even speak. Shame on you, Just Brian. how much he wanted to get to this element of a clue. Like Columbo. So, 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 so hold on a minute. So, <laughs> exactly so how it is. the murder yeah, mystery yeah. is about finding, it, yeah. it, it, it gives you a scenario yeah, and then you have to they, find They act out the scenario, they, they give us some killer. clues. Yeah. We do a bit of treasure yeah. hunt for more clues. So wherever the hotel was, the actors would take over the hotel to a point. They'd liaise with the hotel and say, can we have extra rooms or can I do this here? And they'd, they'd fully participate. None of the right. hotels ever said no, which was good. Um, and then you just... You'd start off at dinner, so they'd come in and they'd be straight into character at dinner. 
Um, and even if you saw them at breakfast the next day and try and get more, they stay, they remain in character right. even at breakfast. So even in their downtime, if they saw the guests. So this went on for more than one day? Weekend. Weekend. Yeah. Weekend. Friday to Sunday. Friday to Sunday. Friday to Sunday. Yeah. In, between, in between, we did like aerobic classes. Yeah. Um, and it was a pamper and a weekend, of dances, so spa, well, yeah. sauna, swimming pool, stuff like that. A little bit alternative to like a... A weekend, yeah, like, yeah. Um, the rave would be an added extra. Yeah, the rave each rave. night would be an added extra. So, so would that, one of the kids be actual, would one of the actors, or would we they killed. name you out? No, one of the actors no, no, one would, one would be actors. killed yeah. in some way, yeah. and then you and it was it always themed because we had like Jack the Ripper. Yeah. Um, we had like East Alice Enders, in Alice in Wonderland. So we did all different kind of. It's called Dead Enders, Dead Enders, and we had a combination of Dynasty and Dead Dallas. It was yeah. Yeah, Dynasty. Yeah. What was it called? Dynasty? Dynasty or something like that. We had a few twists to it. It was fantastic. Yeah. And then we'd have, we'd have an after party as well. Robin so like, Hood. We did a few. Same thing again. It was themed. And so we you, did that for about 10, 10 years. Went on for about 10, 10 years. years. I can imagine yeah. it going for some. I was just about to say, like, that must have yeah. been such a great, unique but experience. But it took a lot building For a lot of people. It. Right, a lot okay. Building Do you know it? what, Reggie? Everyone, the is first it? time I did, right. before I met Sandra and I started, the first time I did Murder Mystery Weekends, I swear to God, this is what I was getting to from our community, it's a white people thing. Wow. So it was really hard. And, and the next yeah. thing, and when it started building and then people started hearing it was good, the, the questions I used to get was, because by then it used to kind of be the same time as the Caribbean weekender. Mm. So the Caribbean weekends, you know, would go on like to what? Yeah, yeah. So I'd get yeah. people ringing up and say, yeah, yeah, I want to book for the car. Um, I want to book for your murder mystery week. And I said, okay, and, and you have after parties. I said, yeah. I said, what time the after parties goes on? I said, mm, two thirty-three. They went, oh no, it doesn't go on late Caribbean. I said, no. <laughs> wow. So and so, yeah. so but then again, it was nice. But the only thing, the reason why we stopped it, be absolutely honest with you, it was just mostly predominantly women. Yeah, it, it was just predominantly, and I think yeah. what it is, women, and I've always said it, women, I think, are probably more open minded than men. Because yeah. that was the question I was getting from men so what time the dance finish? Whereas a woman, oh, it sounds really interesting. interesting. Yeah. This Different, sounds yeah. brilliant. Yeah. I've never heard of it. You know what I mean? And we were the only black promoters in the whole of the UK mm. doing murder mystery. Yeah. So we attracted people from all different parts of the UK because they were fascinated, they were intrigued, mm. like, wow, black people yeah. doing murder mystery. Yeah. And when you actually see people come, the way they started it, these are professional actors. Mm. So if it was Jack the Ripper, they all came in there. Like that. Everything. And it start oh, off yeah, so yeah. slow. The first yeah. night, people say, like, oh, this is rubbish. I want my money back. And we'd say to them, just cool, just chill. You see, the second day, they've got him running all over the car, the castle, the city. <laughs> yeah. They got so competitive. Well, outside the hotel as yeah. well. Yeah, so, sometimes yeah. outside, depending on the weather. Because we did one in Warwickshire. Yeah. And we was running around the castle. Big castle, and Warwickshire yeah. castle. Yeah. Did Robin Hood, Big history. that was, was it? Yeah, Robin, Robin Hood. Hood. Yeah. I was running around the castle. and yeah. I've assumed been... lots of friendships was grown from yeah. those events because it's like yeah. a team bonding ex yeah. exercise. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we had a proposal. We had a marriage proposal. Oh, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, oh, yeah we're yeah. a couple. Yeah. Didn't quite make it. Still together? Had... <laughs> no. <laughs> no. And then, it, but yeah. so from there, Crown Plaza was... About That's when we started Crown Plaza. 2007, yeah. 8? Oh, actually, Crown, Crown Plaza started 2008, but New Year's Eve, mid, it, before it became, it was originally New Year's it's Eve started 2006, mm -hmm. and we started it through you for a Chinese restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2006. It was midnight hour then. And that was held in the was Chinese that the one restaurant. In no, Nick, no, no, next it to Plaza. The, the next, next to opposite XL, so China Palace. Mm -hmm. We started it there. The first year we did it there, and then. Um, which was cool. <coughs> and then the hotel approached us the second year and said, why don't you do it here? And we were like, what's well, they're approaching us? We had, the thing is, guests were staying at the hotel anyway. Yeah. Mm. So we thought it makes sense. And then we then, yeah, after and the you first started, year. How many people was that on your first one in the, in, how, how, in fact, how many people did you start off in China Palace? China Palace was, was it sitting 150 or something for dinner? Maybe about, yeah. Might have been about 400. Yeah. Told. Mm -hmm. And then you went Good to Crown time. Plaza, and at Crown Plaza you had... About the same to start with, but then it just kept building. I think and the then... Crown Plaza, because we changed part, we then drifted, same thing, we had our no, own visions. We, we hit the recession in the Crown Plaza as well. Because we started the Crown Plaza 2008. We hit that heavy recession as well, which hit us, which mm. hit everybody, to do, but it did hit us. We definitely, that September of, I can't remember what year... Hit us hard. 2009, that, wasn't it? Yeah, something like that. Because we were taking like 150 bedrooms, easy. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And then that year, we just about took 40, 50 rooms mm. where the recession hit hard that year. I'm fascinated to, when you say that about the recession yeah. and how the economy 
played mm. in to um, your events. Mm. Uh, is that something that you consider consider at the time? You know, you obviously been in project management. You have a bit more insight into how the market works. Would you mm. um, specifically hold your events at particular times of the year? Did you find any patterns where well, people would book more easier, say, for instance, in autumn or uh, around a holiday no, time? I wouldn't would say so. i tell you what I do, and I still do it now, yeah. mm. when I do events. I ring around people and I try not to do... It's not saying that, for Brian me... Won't, Brian won't <coughs> gazump someone, put it that way. Brian's your considerate promoter. He won't, <laughs> he won't gazump. So we put on events, and because of the nature of road, being Roadrunner, he can see when Pacific birthdays happen Ooh. and avoid them. Yeah. Okay. Not to say that everyone avoids our events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's always. You a mean other event, event promoters? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I do it purely out of respect. He, he I does. Do he, he so I would ring you up and bring you up. I'm Ray, and I. Yeah. And even if I, even if I can't get a date on that day, I wouldn't. And yeah. and I still and I, that's how I still do still now. Stick to that, yeah. I still stick to that yeah. now, even though. I'll say to you, Ray, and next minute, I'll say to you, I'm doing a dance on such a day, but next minute we'll still do a dance mm. on my... Mm. Mm. So but doing the leafleting, mm -hmm. yeah. in a way, you kind of like had a competitive advantage yeah. over people because mm. you kind of like knew yeah. when the, the peak yeah. of events mm. were happening and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Would that reflect in... Sorry. No, go on. Oh, would that reflect in the um, number of ticket sales for your events at the time at all? Because Did you see to, like a peak? He used to put his flight at the top of the pack, so that's one thing. That's the advantage of being Roma, isn't it? Though, Ray, come on. So the front and back. Do you know what? Is, but the front <laughs> and back is prime. But you could purchase well, the front and back. No, no I'm comment. Stopping you no, no, <laughs> Did you have any no, other no, points actually, about that? But, no, no, actually. Do you know Sometimes what? Sometimes people pay extra to go in yeah. the front or back. Yeah. Front, yeah. That's it. People yeah. will pay extra for the front yeah. and back. Was that a service that you offered? Yeah, some people say, look, I'll pay you extra to put in the front and back, yeah. but my flow was always in the front. And it, <laughs> yeah, it still is. If I, and if I've got like two or three, it what's is front and back. back. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm interested. What, I'm sorry, what, what, kind of DJ, what kind of DJs was you booking around that, 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 around well. that time who was on your bill? I've, put, I've been honest with you, I've used right. so much different DJs because I'm a type of person. Well, I give like us a to, few. Well, give us a few names. Jay Nice. Was that always one of your DJs Jay, back then? Um, Jay, wow. Yeah, there was a, a I used range. to, like, for, especially, like, see, like, the Murder Mystery, it, it was always SP, Base, yeah, Tony SP Montana. Yeah, they always did the Murder uh, Mystery. Frankie Too Sweet, Frankie, Frankie Beverly. Beverly did the it was Mystery. Jay Nice. Yeah. Crown uh, Plaza was... Crown Plaza Crown back then was Jay Nice. Phase 2. Phase 2, Tony P. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mosty. Um, Mosty. None of the original soul hits. Why not? No, really, but I'd come out from that scene. But did you mm. like any of the DJs to bring back into that scene? Um, or, you know what? Or to cross over and say, uh, all right, let's do uh, something different. No, do you know what? Really, but I said to you, I, I just purely lost contact with my back in the soul, soul head days. I purely lost contact. God, I remember Brian came out of it for a while because of his illness. Mm. So by the time he came back, he'd lost all those contacts a little bit. Right. So and when, bit, I, and bit when I came back, back really, it was, it was hard because I was, before I met Sandra, I was always on my own. So it was... No. It was like, what's that saying? Work hard and pay <laughs> some. <laughs> might, might want to go back that way. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, isn't it? He's a nice, I, isn't I, I know we're jumping, but I really want to go back <laughs> to what you said because obviously, I did. My background is ambient marketing, and mm. I used to run a street team mm. around the country. Um, so, I'm interested to know, in regards to the other side, the consumer. Mm. How effective would you say having that flyer in the Roadrunner pack was from a consumer point of view? How did they um, kind of like, con did, did they really look forward to um, receiving your packs? Because, you yeah. know, sometimes you give it's people a flyer. Yeah. Mixed messages. Yeah, so it turns out, would I get I, value for money as a promoter? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested. Before you, before you came big, before I, I digital. <laughs> before, <laughs> not just you know, I remember before, before digital as well, the yeah. packs were quite key. Yeah. I'd say, I'll be honest with you, I'd say they were very key. I'm not even going to lie, Reggie. So when I, when I started the Roadrunner, uh, the, 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 uh, <laughs> so he wasn't a big order, uh, he just did, yeah. yeah. The <laughs> only person that you was using me was, like I said, was, was Jerry Bascom and David Rodigan. Hello, so what? Hold on. Before you came on the scene, before you you got big. Sort of <laughs> <like>. <laughs> <laughs> I support all my birthday dances on, on your flight. Don't, don't, don't try it. 
Mm, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. True, but, but you know, like, came oh, to me. Yeah. Oh, hold on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Hold on a minute. I forgot. So. You, when you came in, you had a rival because Egan was about those times, yeah. there, wasn't it? Yeah, Flying Squad. Oh yeah, Flying yeah. Squad. Yeah. Flying oh, Squad was yeah, there, yeah, so you yeah. was competing yeah. with um, Flying Squad, wasn't right. it? Yeah, because I bet actually it got yeah. to a stage where I only had besides mine. It was like Jerry Bascom and David Rodigan. They were probably the two that showed the utmost trust in me mm -hmm. and faith. Because if you, it was like, oh, I've seen you here, I've seen you there, I've seen you there. And I think then so it got you, like... So hold on, you'd get a call from the great, like the David Rodigan, <laughs> Rodders. Yeah. <laughs> Brian. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. Who can do a day for a good voice? Only, only, only Reggie. Only Reggie. 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 Do a day for and ask him and ask him to put in, in your a, David Rodigan voice. In the back. In the back. Oh, put on a David Rodigan yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, Brian, I've known you since 1965. <laughs> up at the top of um, uh, uh, um, what's that hill? Um, <laughs> Shooters Hill in Blackheath. <laughs> You know, I really want my. Oh, no, that'd be silly. <laughs> yes. And you know yes, what? And then I think when and because I was going so much places, then it'd be like if, if Reggie had danced, Reggie goes, but you know what? I've seen you here. I've seen you here. I've seen you there. And then Reggie would say, you know what? I've got a dance. Blah 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 blah. Can I give you some of my flyers? How much you charge? Then that going. Yeah. And I think the more people saw, like, oh, Reggie's put his packs in there. He's still just put his packs in mm. there. Raymond's put it. So as far as everyone's gathered, you know what? This is the man. This is the man. And before you know it, I had like 30 odd something. Mm. Sometimes the packs were, I ain't gonna lie, they were too heavy. So the people you were giving them to, yeah. like the Ravers, it became a natural thing for them yeah. to get a Roadrunner yeah. pack yeah. and yeah. they were okay with that yeah. and stuff, yeah. you know. You wouldn't see many on the floor at the end of yeah. the, a dance or anything. Someone just, right. you, know, you wouldn't see yeah. many packs. It wasn't too throw. green back then though, was it? It wasn't too green back then. Yeah. No. yeah. It's always interesting yeah. to see the effectiveness of flyering because I remember when we were in the label, they, they really wanted to, to cut doing that. And I mm. said, you're crazy. This is mm. like one of the best mm. forms, print communication to be able to get, mm. you know, the releases and information to mm. directly to community that we weren't reaching at all. You know? And do you know what? I stopped it. Obviously I stopped it um, due to ill health. Mm. And um, it's so weird in that I've been off sick for what, seven months now. Mm. And in that time I've been off for, for seven months. It's weird. People are now like decided to go back, even though mm. the digital is still the main thing out there. There are still promoters that are saying, you know what I mean? They still want that, that packs to yeah, go out the there. Fires, yeah. And I, to be honest with you, and it's purely because of the demand of the phone calls. I've now relaunching yeah, yeah. it right. this weekend, <laughs> but I'm calling it a diff I've merged with different people, so it's going to be called Wings. Wings. Oh, yeah. so you know, oh. Wings. 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 Yeah. That's right. So it's coming out as a and it's funny that you know they say like in the black community that, you know, we don't get together and, you know, we should yeah. work with each other. You teamed up with two other flyer yeah. people mm. yeah. to create one, yeah. one company. Mm. Yeah. Just, you just said it was called Wings. Mm. But how did that come about from the other two? Um, the other two, one was just like saying, it was just, a, I think just a flute conversation. And another one said like, why don't we just try to do. And the other two used to do a lot of work for us anyway. So yeah, they do a lot of work for us. So it's people what we used to work with anyway, and yeah. one of them just came and said, "You know what? You know, why don't we just share this together? Because we're all seeing each other at the same places, and it, it meant like instead of like me and her at the same place, it could be you could be here, I could be there instead, and we just we just sat down, and thought about it. Okay, let's so how does this work? So this is winter, and it's minus two. Right, so and you're, you're dragging your wife out to go and put. No, you're wife. not. You're yeah. different. You see, right? But do you know what, Richie? Do you know what people? People used to see me out in the snow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You'd be out in the yeah. Come out. You'd be yeah. out in I've been there. I've been there, I've been there doing the streets. He pointed out the poster yeah. boards at Christmas. Yeah. You know, and stuff. Yeah. You know what? It, it's, it's and that's yeah. why I think. That's why I think it became a reputable brand because yeah. no matter what, people can lie on me yeah. being there. Do you know what I mean? I went at home. I was. I just took the leg work. Do you know, people. I was always interested to know because, like, um, obviously doing the ambient marketing, like I said, um, did you have a way of collecting? Because right now, digital, it's all about data. Mm. Did you have a data collection card in there? I never ever remember seeing one in the packs. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? We, 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 I did used to have like a little flyer in there. And I, I, I used to run a like a event website. I used With to say to people, phone line, premium phone the, line. We ran, so, yeah. but. I think it didn't work because I've looking back, looking upon reflection now, I think we might have been ahead at times. Because okay. it would be a phone yeah, number. Yeah. We'd say like, say like ring 692151, blah, blah, blah. Mm. The and they say, hi, this is, say like Roadrunner, events line, well, on Friday, this is blah, blah, blah. We tried it. Mm. But I, I think, 
yeah. to today's society or generation or what you want to call it, it was it we was too yeah, far right. ahead. So you didn't have a, like a so, sign up. Nah, sign so up I stopped here it. For more we tried events. it. Right. I think if we did it now, it probably would, probably would work. I right, think okay. it would work, but I think we was too far ahead. Mm -hmm. for, yeah. for Brian, but tell me your typical. So you're getting prepared. So I want to know your typical because I don't think we've discussed this a lot at all on set the trend. So the typical night for road runner starts when how do you prepare so i'm going out on a friday night so it starts midweek so it starts with mid midweek because i'd say to people uh, like people would call me oh, i need to get get mm -hmm. get to get the um, flyers to so i'd say to people get it to me by wednesday because simply and who packs your flyers because yeah because you, you put them in the plastic yeah bag, I've been, I, get, I get someone had numerous people pack our flyers so i get people okay. to so i pay people to pack to yeah so i pay yeah, people to pack it when there's two of you though yeah if I have to do it, you know, if I have to do it, I will do it. But I pay people to do Sergeant, it, yeah. like the youngsters. I've like, done it. You don't. You sit yeah. together. You yeah. put yeah. them in. I've done it. I'm watching TV while I'm doing it. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've done yeah it. Sometimes, there's sometimes yeah. the weekend too busy. Sometimes can be too so busy. mad. That even yeah. though I'm paying other people, yeah. the output it needs yeah. to be like thousands. So then yeah. I help. Okay, so oxygen. that's you preparing for it. Then on the night, on the evening. What time are you getting ready to go out for? How does this work? And so what then, time, yeah. and what time do you get back so in? So what I usually do is once I know all the, once I know the times, the times of the events, what time they finish, then it's all I kind of do it geographically wise. Look up where's what's in south, what's in east, what's in north and west, what's what's in the city. I look up what times they finish, and then obviously I've I become like a taxi driver. You know what I mean? I know all the short routes, so and I could probably do the whole of London within. He'd set, he'd set out probably about just after midnight, I'd say, depending on timings. And many a time, Brian's not coming back till five, six in the morning. I ain't going yeah. to lie. Yeah. So many I've done, a time, I've, I've called him as well. Because yeah. we you know that worry. <coughs> called, where well, are saved, you? Well, I can, well, that definitely saved me as a journey. Because I remember when I used to go out flyering um, for my individual mm. dance. And when I wasn't playing out, so if it was midweek, Wednesday or Thursday, you had to get up. Yeah. You go sleep and then you get up at two o'clock, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. half yeah. two, mm -hmm. then you make it to the club before the mm -hmm. club yeah. finishes mm -hmm. just to get a specific club. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just, yeah. it was, it just played with your, with your whole living because yeah. you'd have to get up and go work in the morning again. And that's yeah, it. Man. I still go to, and I go in a couple of hours sleep and that's it. Just get up and go work. How yeah. has the uh, 20 miles restriction affected you? It must yeah. have. Do you know what? I've been, I've been pulled, I've been, been even, no, even though I've not started anything, but just doing that alone, we was only talking You've about it this week. You've done one speed away already, so trust me, you <laughs> can't, I mean, you can't yeah, be doing just, much yeah, more. That's what I'm about. How much points have you got? No, you got no, any. you know what? You ain't got any. No, I haven't got, a bit absolutely, there, there was one, there was one time I was going to get disqualified, and I went to, and I went to, oh, yeah. I went to, um, he had loads, at one point he had loads, he mm -hmm. was, he was on the brink. He was on the brink and he didn't kind of stand up for himself in court and like, what? They're going to disqualify you here. So I got up. Uh, <laughs> Hello. <laughs> she saved uh, my bacon. This is the road runner here. Hello. She saved my bacon. Literally, I was like. I was about to get but, banned. Do you know what? Because before I got into events, I used to, I worked in the, in the courts for mm. nine years. So I kind of. I knew slept, the process. Yeah, kind of, I knew yeah. the process a little bit. I used to sleep a lot more than I worked. Mm. But, um, so when he wasn't really speaking up for himself, kind of taking his little, just taking it on the chin, I was like. You're going to be out of business here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they didn't get disqualified. But it's so yeah. funny that, you know, as she said, you used to go from one club to the other. But, you know, to leave from the city to go over to Wembley and then to go over to another venue. Like, before, you could just... But now, yeah, you can only do one club now or two, if that. And do you know what? And I think that's why merging with two other people... <laughs> works. It's going to make life easy, because now, strategically, we know what's on. We, we know what's on, really, yeah. right up to about July. But so cruise we, control is going to be his first friend. Mm, cruise yeah. control. So you have like your schedules already. So yeah. Like you have your schedule. You have a deadline for flyers to come in. Yeah. And this is something I used to always say to my street teacher. You say, "Wow, well, we're rich." Blah 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 blah. Because I used to be very meticulous, and I used to write out yeah. um, schedules, and they didn't realise yeah. the the, the, <laughs> core, the core skills yeah. Yeah. involved. Because when you think about it, yeah. you're, you're working at logistics. But that's how so I work. you can run your that's you can go on to run your logistics exactly company. Is, yeah. You know, still, so there's a lot of um. Yeah. You know, people don't realise a lot um, of core skills that you find and you learn from behind, you know, doing it. And it's weird that the Roadrunner, another reason why I did the Roadrunner, it was also to go hand in hand with my promotion. Because mm. I honestly believed how I built myself up a lot, well, a lot of it was because I was able to, I think you can't, there's nothing like that one-to-one, -one, giving out a flyer, talking mm. to someone, building that rapport, 
you know, talking to the yeah, ladies cool. and, you mm. know, all sorts of things. But that's what helped me get yeah, me where I am market. today. Yeah. yeah. You know, this, <laughs> sorry, this, this just came <laughs> in my head. So, you know, there's that Mexican um, sounding horn on the car. You go, da, 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 yeah. da, da, da. Does, yeah, your, does your horn go, me, me, no, me, I've me. Had, Yeah, I've had people do that. Like I'm outside and they, they're like, run, run, run. <laughs> yeah, 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 so I get that with little jokes. Yeah, 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 yeah I still get, I do get those jokes too, yeah. <laughs> so we talked about Crown Plaza, going back to events. We yeah. talked about Crown Plaza. And then when did you go from Crown Plaza to Excel? Because that's when that no, New Year's Eve from... thing kind of exploded we for you, wasn't it? We went from Crown Plaza to the Grange. To the Grange. The Grange. Oh, yes, you Grange yeah, over by Tower Bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah very that's bougie. Really... That's a five-star hotel, wasn't it? Do you know what? Yeah, it's five, it's five yeah. star. Yes. Do you know yeah. what? When because when we started off in the, mm. the Crown Plaza, it got to a stage we just outgrew it. Mm. Um, mm. So when you went to the Grange, it was how many people was you getting? Because you had two rooms. Yeah, two rooms. Yeah. you could get like what fifteen so hundred in there. When we moved over to the Crown Plaza, from the Crown Plaza to the Grange, <laughs> we probably had about six, seven hundred people mm. at the Crown Plaza. So we was maxing out this space because when they start giving you headache about your numbers. It's time to, to kind of do a move. And I went, I remember I went to a networking event, met the GM, and she was like, yeah, I'll, have, I'll look, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy. Come over. Looked at the space, and it was vast compared to the Crown Plaza. Yeah. It was vast. And I thought, but I, I was like, yeah, I'm ready for the move. And then I took Brian there, and he was just like, no, I want to stay at the Crown Plaza. I'm like, <laughs> no, I think we no really vision. have to move. You're scared to upscale. <laughs> there was a lot of pros and cons because at the Crown Plaza, we were doing firework displays right. at midnight. Oh, you couldn't do that in the city where we were. There was, it was so many things that made the Crown Plaza different. And we were like, well, how do we now make the Grange be different? Um, but also with me, I was thinking we need to grow. We needed the, we needed the space to grow. So how long did you do at the Grange? We did four or five years at the Grange. About four years. But which yeah. which Grange? Because you went from Tower, the... Tower Bridge. Grange, Tower Bridge. We were at mm -hmm. for the for the duration, and then from there we then went to Excel. Excel. But didn't yeah. you do the because it was two Granges? The one in we only, did, no, we we only did, did the Tower Bridge one. Tower Bridge, yeah. Yeah. Only okay, so that was bridge. the that was the bigger one, but there was also yeah. one up. Yeah, so it's further one further around, up yeah. around the corner, St Paul's. Yeah. It's called it's called Leonardo's now. Yeah, they're Leonardo Hotel now. So, so mm. the Grange went on for four or five years and you grew to about 1,500 people. Mm. So whose mm. idea was it then to take it to your workplace? <laughs> was that Brian saying, actually... No, 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 do you know what, Ray? Do you know what happened? They started getting ridiculous they with, the, with the bar really prices. They started getting really bad with the bar prices. Yeah. And, the and when we say... All right, let's do this. No, 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 no. Let's do this. Who's going to say? Who's going to say? We should leave the bar. They started having prices. Go on. When you... <laughs> when you, let, when you, me let me sit up in my chair. When you say ridiculous with the buy prices, give me an example of what ridiculous was. So a bottle of brandy. No, it was it was even it was. I think what really stuck out. It was a bottle of brandy was like one twenty or something back then. It was one twenty one fifty. A bottle of coke was ten pounds or something like that. A bottle it, of champagne, so your LP champagne would have been. I think one of the, the soft drinks were absolutely ridiculous prices, yeah. like £10. So when we a five-star hotel. But when we started out, it was OK. But as the numbers grew, it yeah. just seemed like the hotel got more, more greedy. Yeah. More than we were putting yeah. our prices up, they were increasing their prices, to be honest with you, a lot. So And you spoke, and you spoke with the hotel staff and said, look, come on, drop these prices and what yeah, will they answer? Yeah. No, they weren't. We, we said, we will take the bar, we'll take a... Um, percentage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that because by then yeah. the numbers were big in it. So once mm. they see the big numbers, they're not going to mm. come back from giving you dry hire or anything like that. And we had a good relationship, mm -hmm. uh, and I think the relationship probably changed when that GM then moved. Mm. Mm. A new GM came, didn't really see the same vision as the last GM that I got on with really, really well. Um, and I and at that point, I think we'd started to outgrow the Grange anyway as well. Mm. We started to outgrow, so it was too. Two mm. things there. Um, and I didn't really know what Excel would say because it's a conflict of interest to a point. I'm an employee as well as working. And you'd worked at Excel for a number of years by then, mm. haven't you? Mm. Yeah. And yeah, and I asked, well, I went to one of my directors first who knew that I did the promotion stuff anyway. Mm. Yeah. And he was like, they're going to charge you a bomb, Sandra. Don't even bother think about it. And he was like, <laughs> <laughs> like nah. And I was like, mm, what does he no, know? No. <laughs> no. And then I asked one of the sales guys, he's like, no, of course we can do something for you. And they did. Mm. They did look after us the first few years. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Once they see, it's always the case. It seems to be the running theme. Like, yeah, yeah, let's bring them in. Once they yeah. see the level of spend, yeah, it wasn't it even the changes. level of spend. No? Of you, no, it wasn't more so the level of spend. I think once when I was employed, it was diff- very different. Right. Then when I wasn't employed, it's very, it's now very different. Do you know what I mean? Friends For now, family, yeah, yeah. I'm just a normal. Did they used to hire it out for, for those for the kind no. of parties that they you still do. don't. So no. They don't. We're the first okay. black and a, and so the only parties that would happen are parties within a corporate environment. Mm-hmm. So if I don't know, so they wouldn't even. So if I went there as an outsider and I, and I wasn't there, they'd give me short short shrift and and say maybe not oh. short shrift. Sh- they'd probably take on board your query, oh. have oh. a chat with you, but then they'd probably throw something at you that is so ridiculous and be like, yeah, okay, and oh. you go, okay, bye. I think other people so, have tried it. They have tried it. But, but yeah. if this, like someone just says. Yeah. So did you get, so. so in terms of the license for the play, because we, because you've gone quite late there, you've got five, five o'clock license there, haven't you? So mm-hmm. the, the venue's fully licenced. Mm. That, the that's 24 the, hour license. 24 hour license at Excel. So that's the beauty of Excel. Mm-hmm. They can mm-hmm. do what they want as much as they want mm-hmm. to a point um, because of their 24 hour license. Um, we're licensed. So to be able to do what we do within mm-hmm. their venue, we're licensed. Um, and I think it's just, it's also a trust element as well for them, because obviously I know the ins, the outs, the background to the venue, mm-hmm. more so than the staff, the staff that are there now to be able to view. But I try not to take that too much on board. That's so why I'm like, what was yeah. the price difference, not of the venue, but in putting on the two events from the Grange and upscaling it to um, the Grange, to the Grange wasn't too bad in fairness, because that was packaged with the Grange. So. Uh, with the Grange, we used to pay a price per head. They do all the food, which was fine. Never had any complaints about food with the Grange. And then they'd give us a price for rooms. So, and, and at that time, we were getting reasonable rates for the rooms and we could package it and sell it on. At that time. At that time. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, hotel rooms now are very different from they were. Oh, they're crazy, isn't it? Before Price COVID, crazy. mental, and that's yeah. across the board. Yeah, even hot, like, mental. Little, little holiday in. No. Yeah, holiday yeah, it's very like different. Quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? Yeah. You know, Are you been staying there lately? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I've been booking some, uh, some Just like rooms it. for some of my guests. But, 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 uh, okay. You know what's really, yeah. you know what, <laughs> you know really interesting? Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing Bid, bid night affair for, I don't know, about 17 <laughs> years. Yeah. You wouldn't believe it. Regardless what hotels we've used, Last year was the first, first time, time in 17 up. years we've price actually up. put our prices up. Yeah. That was the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah. First time ever. Yeah. What, your prices on tickets? <coughs> everything. Yeah. That's yeah. the everything. first time we put our prices up last year. So what stopped you so, from doing that? Do you know Previously. what? Think, because we'd worked out, because if you don't work out your costings before you start an event, you never know where you need to be to make back mm-hmm. what you what, what it's going to cost you. And because we'd always known that, even with the increases we were getting from the hotels and stuff, we were able to absorb it mm. to a point. So the really? so yeah. Well, why we would were. you do that? I mean, well, exactly. The typical it's thing really, is to it's pass it's the it's cost it's onto the consumer. The interview. I think we broke our people then bad because, ah. if I'm honest, because Let's once say that again for the camera. Yeah, we did break. I I will definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's we important them, that you say that because <laughs> we broke them bad. Because then when we did yeah. put the prices up, you felt like you're having to justify telling you why mm-hmm. actually prices have gone up from year on year, but actually you just haven't seen it, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So yeah, I think we did kind of doing that event broke them a little bit. And let's just make yeah. it clear: in terms of an event space, mm. you're at a premium event space in the London. Well, um, yeah, if not, not the whole of UK, me. because there's yeah. not many venues that no. do what Excel Centre does, is it? No. Exhibitions, and mm-hmm. they have exhibitions Got the army wide and far. Yeah. They have everybody in there, yeah. but everybody's and, in there. Yeah. yeah, that used to be one Careers, of my Careers, yeah, they've got yeah. all Thanks. the stuff in there. I did G20 with Obama. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. I've, been, yeah, I've done a lot there. Tell us more about that. Just a little bit. It was good. Of what you can say. Did you have to sign the Secrets <laughs> Act? No, no, well, at the time, yeah. You did? You had to sign the Secrets Act? Not a Secrets Act, oh, but right. at the time, it, you, yeah, kind of thing. But you go through a whole data thing and the it was um, G4S to co- take over. So the whole, everything is searched. Yeah. Searched to a point where sniffer dogs are in, out, mm-hmm. in, up, everything. And then everything gets a seal put on it. So once everywhere's been searched... The doors had a, a seal on it, so then if the seal was broken, yeah. then it had to be researched because then someone had been through it and everything like that. So, and then once it was totally searched, it became a a good space, even though 
the office I was working in had some snipers that hadn't slept for like three days. I'm like snipers. Yeah, but they hadn't slept for like days. I'm like, if something happened, how are you going to see to snipe anybody? I'm like, a train man was way. actually sleeping in my office and on, on, on the what, day. Sleeping and eating. In, in, they in, were just yeah. He came and he said, "Do you mind?" I went, "No, feel free." I said, "Because you're there to protect me too." <laughs> so, um, yeah. Did you meet Obama? I did meet Obama. Did you yeah, get my that famous picture? Proud. I didn't get the famous picture because I didn't realise I was going to meet him. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's a I shame. I didn't realise I was going to meet him, to be honest with you. What about Michelle? Michelle, my No, she wasn't with me. Oh, she went with him. Okay. Uh, All right. No. But I didn't realise I was going to meet yeah. him. He just, he just popped up out of a stairwell. Mm. I famous. DJed at an event when G20 was on in Celtic Manor in Wales. Mm. And it was literally... The security was unbelievable, unbelievable. for that. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like from a, nearly a mile out, mm -hmm. literally, wow. mm -hmm. you know, when mm. we were coming up, they yeah. uh, they put me in a hotel in, mm. in Newport mm. and the security just one mile yeah. out was unbelievable. Sat in unbelievable. the big old car, which was nice. Yes. Car yeah, the, beast, nice. the, the beast, the beast, didn't it? Yeah. 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 So yeah. which was your most successful year in XO? My successful year. Yeah. Which Ooh. is which which ones which year holds the best memories for you in there? G twenty, because I think that's iconic to have met. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Black and event President. wise. Massive. Event wise, I'd say probably uh the the tanks, the DSCI, if I'm honest with you. Because that's again that's high profile. High Venue's profile. totally locked down. Mm. Protesters in. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so let's get to up uh, back to the events. Mm. Me, myself and I events. Which one of the years was your most? Let's, do, the most let's do like they do like um, homes, but they, <laughs> you know what it is. <laughs> For me, <laughs> Crown Plaza. Yeah, you always. Want, Brian never wanted to move from the Crown Plaza. My God, it, that was a hard move. I'd probably say Malta because I think there was loads of challenges going abroad. Um, and, and you went Malta. Your, your your first year in Malta was when twenty nineteen was our first year in Malta. So what made you then take the brand overseas? Do you know what? People kept asking. They kept saying, because after the murder mystery and something, you should do you should do stuff abroad, you could do stuff abroad. And I kept saying, right, it's always going to, people saying you could do it, but are they going to bloody support it? Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Kind of thing. And we just took a risk on it one day. Um, we had a link for Malta and we decided to, we, we started looking at it from about 2017. So yeah, about mm. 2017, we was going out to Malta. I was emailing to start with, and let me tell you, nothing. Not even a sniffle of an email back from anybody in Malta. Wow. Nothing. No, at all. no. How it started really was, it was me. But sent all the emails out because this is because <laughs> this is what happened. I took you and Wayne out there because I said I made. We need to contact these clubs and hotels. Yeah. Come and have a look. What's Wayne going over there for? It was just. I think well, I don't know why. Security. It was for security point, reasons. Yeah. Plus, Wayne knew some of the people out there already. Yeah. Big Wayne. I don't so, know why he gets a free trip out of this. <laughs> he one. gets the I mean, I mean, well, I mean what's did, he got to do with but it? But he did know. He, he did know. No, he, he, he was did, very, he was, he was very <laughs> helpful. Because yeah. what happened? I'd contact all these different hotels. And I contacted all different. And I just said to him, "To look, just come and have a look." And obviously, yeah. by then, started building relationships with some of the contacts out there. So I said to these two, "Come out." I'm really glad these two come out because the hotel is what I did like. Them lot didn't like so, and you've been in the hotel what we stayed. So it was, mm. I'm I'm really glad these two came. So it really, I kind of got the ball rolling first, and I said, look, you guys come and. But then look what like did. the door wasn't really opening as such. Mm. So emails were going. Nothing. I was thinking, how does this work? And I was also I was using a corporate email address, thinking I've been smart in it. They should use the work email address. They still weren't responding. And like I said, it wasn't until we met the gentleman one day in the back of an alley, and literally he made one phone call, and literally they started responding to the emails. And that was it. So, okay, so it's, yeah. so it's like a a little closed shop. At, at, it is, and it's, it's still like that now. It's a bit like, it's still like, like that now. Yeah, we have families run. Sorry, families running the um. Yeah, because the hotel we use is family run, family okay. owned, um, and it's been the whole time. Same family own it, same family run it, um, and it is. It's a closed shop out there. To be honest with you, it's quite a hard country to. Who do, you cater for? Sorry, Who do you cater for? So, what age group? What's your what, what's the say over, what's, what's the I'd say, over, I'd say over 40s mm -hmm. but we've had some that are in between 30 and 40 and I've had, really had my daughter yeah we've even last year we had a couple of, a couple of younger ones that were between 30 and 40 and they loved it so, you know what, for, i think for us it, no, but hold on a the reason why we called your it a dj right wow well, she's she's quite a big time dj looks like what's we can't we can't even book her Nick J. Jay. 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 You can't even book yeah. her. I can't even book her. She's too week, busy. in the week, weekend. I've, you've put her on some of your events. Yeah, and I'm, I'm putting her on my next event as well. So yeah. in terms of female presence, 
you know we've just been so overly heavy on male mm. DJs. Mm. What do you think about it's it's your daughter, it's personal, it's gonna be personal. She's mm. coming into a male orientated world, maybe mm. not so much on our circuit, mm. but yeah. our circuit needs those DJs yeah. to evolve. Mm. What do you you know how do you feel? Like what's do you your know what? But sorry to you, um I have regular discussions with her and I talk to her from a man perspective. She's in the male world anyway, yeah. isn't she? Yeah. Is she, she a house DJ? Both. She, she's she has both, house. but a lot of yeah. it is house. Of it and is she, house. Can play on, she can she play, play on our scene because I've put her on our circuit mm -hmm. and mm. she held herself very, very well. What does she think about our DJs on our scene? I bet, well, to be honest with you, but you not, the, youngs, the youngsters, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a DJ, but the technology and how they DJ and everything like that, yeah. They're 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 ahead, they're ahead of our yeah. circuit because mm. yeah. I've seen my daughter play and I've seen mixing, certain DJs. They're mixing live, aren't they? They're not my, playing a mix. Yeah. They're mixing. And my That's daughter, the, she, the way they mix, mm. they've left. They're, they're ahead level. of us. Yeah, mm. they're a different. Mm. Level. They're a different level. Mm. And would you consider booking more of the younger DJs for more of your events, or are you happy with the the age and demographics of what you do? We, I'm happy. I'm gonna speak for me. I'm happy with the age and demographic of what we do, in all fairness, because I've, I've sat on both fences, isn't it? So when I worked at Players, and you'd have the youngsters in. Players is like... Way back. Way club. back, yes. But you'd sit there, or I'd be in the office there, and as soon as that music used to... I, I wouldn't say it so much now, but way back when, it, when the music used to switch into the funky... The, the whole culture of the room used to change. Change, totally. The whole thing. A night could just come to an end instantly yeah. in players. I will be there. Switch. We earn one thing yeah, every year. Literally. literally <laughs> whereas with, with us, you can switch music from genre to genre mm. and it's still quite calm. And I wouldn't say it's so much now, to be honest with you, because I'm not out on the younger scene as much, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And I would have hoped that they had the calmness has, it has calmed down a lot. But way back, it, that switch of music used to frighten, could frighten you. Really? Do you know what I talk about? Yeah. Um, you and you've mentioned it, um, but we haven't gone into it. You've done this while having um, a v a very serious condition throughout the last what twenty odd years. Twenty odd years. 20 odd years. Yeah. So do you want to? Do you want to? What did it? F <laughs> it's always something to ask you know, when someone says you get it, and uh, and it's the big C. Mm. It's the big C. What did you feel like at that moment when you got that? Yeah, um, you was running two businesses. Well, he's running one business and he was working mm. your nine to five. What kind of impact did it have on you then? Well, I'm well, I'm off. I've just come through my third cancer. Well, so um, don't know. Well, congratulations on that. I think one. the first time. So I started promotions. What two thousand? Two. 2001, my first cancer. 2001, I tried to kill myself. Uh, what well, was that just because of where you thought you was, as in your whole body and where you was going? Or was it the fact what you just couldn't deal with someone diagnosing you as that? Or do you know, the way your family looked at you or your friends looked at you? What, what made you, what gave you so much that feeling that you felt that you would consider taking your life? Back then, I'll give you an example. Back then, phew, might have been about 14 and a half stone. I was a boxer. Yeah, so that's right, I remember. So for me... Broccoli. Yeah. South, so South, for me, a South East London Lucian represent... For me, Lubara. that was my future. You know what I mean? You yeah. just want to be on TV and make money, blah, blah, blah. So then... And he was some, a good amateur. Yeah. He was a good amateur yeah. boxer. So when someone around. tells you, yeah. my mass is terrible, I was 30-something. So when someone tells you, you've got cancer, yeah. and especially that type of cancer is finding that older generation, yeah. So yeah, I tried to kill myself, depression. Be honest with you, I could see, see like, I might see Ray walking on the road like that. Be honest with you, I'd do anything to hide Ray, to not to talk to him. And I'll be honest with you, I hated everybody because <clears> I, was, <throat> I was up and coming boxing and my, I just felt like my whole life had been taken away. What type of cancer was it? Um, so I had my large intestine taken out. So, um, and I'll be honest with you, I think what helps, this, this promoting thing, it's a really beautiful. It's right. give you a focus. It's a, yeah, focus on distraction from that's and from... that's exactly it yeah. is. It's a big focus. And then when I had the cancer again, two thousand and twelve. So hold on. So there's a good way. So you got that cancer. You beat it. Yeah. Um, and then they said that you were clear. They wanted me. 
Put this way. Because you've got a certain amount of time that you've got to go to be absolutely clear. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. They, but, they, but, I mean, did you get to, was it was it the four or five years and they said, well, okay, son, like, you're right. Or was it before that it came back again? I can't, I can't. All I can say to you is if you get past five years, you've got a good chance of survival. Mm. But if the, if the cancer comes back within five years, then... It's not a good place to be. Yeah, your it's chance of survival. Cancer. So, so when you were over five, five years, years when you got yeah yeah it was over five yeah. years. So even though I've had three cancers, you wouldn't believe it. Each cancer has been eleven years apart. Yeah, yeah. The same type of cancer or different. So the cancers? first the first time I had my all my testine, the large testine taken out. The <laughs> second cancer I had my right bowel taken out, and this time I've had all my colon just completely. So when you hear me talk about side chick, I've got a um, permanent stoma. So that's how I live. Wow. I, I don't know. Um, how, how does that make you feel? Do you know what? Or how do you, how, what do you do to live with that? I'm still struggling. I'm in a better place now. So I recently I had, count, recent I had counselling. Mm. Um, I still have, I had a little bad day yesterday, bad day, a little bit of down mm. day. Do you know what? It's, it's a different, it's a different it's life inside it? yeah. you. So, a different way. It's a different you, life, what? It's a different life having him having side chicks. That's what I call, call it. Yeah, yeah, you're right there, man. <laughs> so, every, everything is different about his, his routine. Yeah. Every My day is life, different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just going out is just not just going out. He goes out and he's got his man bag with, with backup in case he needs to change his stoma. Mm -hmm. Or he's got um, elements to help the smell not be so bad within the bag. It's, there's, do you know, it's think, loads of different combinations yeah. to actually try and help live with what he's got to live with, to be honest with you. But I think and going it's, out it's for me, it's, I think every time I go out, it's anxiety. Yeah. Because I never used to go out, it's only now that I've started coming out, whereas before, yeah. if you invited us out, I'd say, Sanjay, you go, make up something for me. Mm. So, so it's only now <clears> I've started to socialise, but mm. it's always anxiety I have to get past first. What I've noticed, about you recently with the cancer, you you speak about it a lot. Is that because you want to get the message out, or it gives you comfort in talking about it? Do you, that's, do you know what, Matt? That's a real good question. It's a bit of it's a bit of it's, it's both Therapy. really because um, while I was in hospital, I was hearing quite a few people being diagnosed with cancer, and even now I'm hearing people. Um, cancer and people some people are dying and I was I think what really hit me hard was there was someone in the hospital someone had died of cancer the family never knew they had cancer but the thing I think the thing what kind of really made woke up hit the bells for me that family never they felt bad because it's like it's like say like for instance Sandra had cancer she died of cancer I'm thinking hold on a minute my own wife why didn't I know why didn't she tell me mm -hmm. so they felt really bad and I just felt like there's too many people out there suffering with cancer in silence I need to do something so I've been doing like little radio interviews. Mm -hmm. People are now ringing me up for advice. So I'll go and meet people. <laughs> so it's a bit of trying to be, for me, really, it's about that voice trying to be inspiration for people yeah. and how, stuff like that. How hard within our community is it hard to talk about something like that? Is that why you champion it so much? Yeah. Because you see other people with yeah. not talking about it yeah. within our community? I, I mean, and that's a, a lot of it, I think, I don't know. I think back then, twenty three years ago, and it still is. When you mention the word, mention that word, cancer of black people, mm -hmm. it's kind of a stigma. It's like black people don't really want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. So me, so like I say, my voice now, I'm trying to be an inspiration to people to say, look, I've had cancer three times and I'm still here. Um, so now, you know, I've done radio interviews. People are calling me up, stuff like that. I'm even doing my my next focus is now. I'm putting on a charity event. Okay. Um, on the 17th of March yes and I've called it uh, we're all in this thing together um, and it's to raise as much money as possible for Macmillan um, mm -hmm. cancer support and I'm trying to get the whole community I've um, seen you I've seen you post it and I've seen the community posting it yeah um, again just for the camera you know when is it and what is how do we get involved it's on the 17th of March um, if you want to get involved the Riverside venue in Hounslow. I don't know the postcode, but if you're interested, <laughs> ring Sandra, give them your number, take the pressure yeah. off me. So it's £25 a ticket, um, and ticket that's first release, and it'll go up as it gets nearer to the event. 
all the proceeds are being donated to Macmillan. Um, and that, that is like the bar, that, ticket, food, I mean, yeah. all the money. So absolutely everything. <coughs> Nothing given the venues. Giving you the venue for venue free. Venue have given not for free, free. but have given it at a very low cost. So yeah. Riverside's not a cheap venue. Mm. All um, DJs are playing for free. All yeah. DJs are playing for free. Yeah. Security. What's the DJs that you've got on that lineup? Got Studio Express, Dero P, TLC, Neek J, um, Federal Touch, Frankie Too Sweet, Frankie and Frankie Beverly. Yeah. yeah. And, and all playing free. Yeah. And your normal way of advertising on the community radio stations. I'm going to be putting on the radio stations. I've been doing a lot mm -hmm. of socials, been asking people to um, put it out there. Mm -hmm. I've just got some flyers, so I'll be getting back out there. Do you flyers. feel like the community supporting you on that project? They are. They I are. think they are, because there's elements of it, because the, the project came about when Brian was in hospital, in all fairness. It, it's always been on his tick list to do a charity event, but never got round to it. Never got round to it. Mm -hmm. So when he was in hospital, it was... Um, <coughs> Sharon from Touch of Elegance mm. that said we need to put on charity and I said actually it has been on his hit list but just never got round mm. to it so we just agreed to just do it <coughs> not put it off or anything just find a date um, and I literally contacted Riverside because we've done a bit of work there for them um, they were really good when Brian was in hospital because I, I went to an event there while Brian was in hospital and they were literally like Sandra if you need anything money and I was like oh my god like, yeah, Sandra, but they were good they were really good in terms of support so I reached out to them and said this is what I would like I said to them I don't expect you to totally give me the venue for free because I get there's overheads um, but they gave it a very good price so um, yeah. mm. which so is good there we have um, behind every good man is a woman um, mm. how mm. stressful has it been Looking after well, Brian. I say, well, do you know what? The many I've, moods of Brian yeah. while he's going through his illness. I've given it a hell. I'll be absolutely fair. I did a. <laughs> do you know what? I did a radio. I've did a, a radio interview, and I, and I'm going to be absolutely honest with you. I give it a hell. I used it as a punching bag. I mean, I didn't like physically hit her, but you, you name it, I had a breakdown. So you mm -hmm. name it, I went dark places. I tried to, I jeopardize my. I tried to jeopardize my my relationship with her. Sometimes I still do it now. It's how do you pull it back from that, Sandra? I just, do you know what? I just ignore it because for me, when well, you I, can't totally ignore it, I, I ignore it to a point. I do ignore it. I walk away. Mm. I walk because one thing with me, I'm a it, they, there's two sides to people it's fight or flight. Mm. And outside of the home, I <clears> definitely <throat> fight. I definitely give it my all when I'm outside the mm. home, but in my home, I like peace and harmony. So I don't do with the argument to mentative side of things or or anything like that so when he's carrying off his, his nonsense i just step away mm -hmm. go to another room <laughs> an hour later <coughs> sorry thank you mm -hmm. and then we carry on the evening but i don't do disharmony in the mm -hmm. home and if i know brian is going having his moment i just let him have the moment because it mm -hmm. really you need to have the outburst I'm, to pull but back. aren't you scared sometimes when he talks about no he doesn't feel like no. being here you know no. he's not going nowhere no. <laughs> No. And, the, and the thing is for me, because when I first the mm. when I first met Brian, he opened up about his cancer, mm. and I think he felt it was going to be the the be or make or whether or not we got together. But what Brian didn't realise, I'd already I'd already nursed my dad and my stepdad through mm. cancer. Mm. So for me, I've grown into it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And when I hear people talking, that's why I sometimes think I have a very old head on me because I have a, I have a mother that schooled me in a way that grew me in a way. That I've adapted to certain things before I should have done, if I'm mm -hmm. if I'm honest with you. So him him having the cancer just for me was just another level that I'd already been there with to a point. Mm -hmm. Um and even with it because I wasn't there for his first cancer, but I was definitely there with the second cancer. And even the second cancer, I was still working every day. So I'd have the laptop by the bed mm -hmm. working. This third cancer was right on top of an event that we were doing. I said, let's cancel it. I think you said cancel. I said, mm. no, we're rolling with it. We're not cancelling it. No, mm -hmm. I think he did say cancel it, this one. And we went with it. And yeah, it's hard because mm. his mindset is he just wants to get involved. Yeah. And at that point in August last... Oh, Fifty Shades. Fifty Shades. Okay. He, just, yeah. he just couldn't because he couldn't lift anything. He couldn't, he couldn't pick up anything. And Brian just wants to drag and pull. And so that was quite hard having him being there, wanting to be there, but not being able to lift a finger to actually help. Mm. But, um, and Fifty Shades is another event that you do as yeah. well as, isn't that? Yeah. yeah. Which is what people wear blue. Yeah. yeah. Blue. Yeah. Which is, yeah. 50, is, which 50. is his favourite colour in all fairness, yeah. blue. But um, so that's that's how the charity kind of come about as well, to be honest with you, that it was a tick list. Whether or not 
I feel it's something we should do on a year in because I think mm -hmm. giving back because there's so many people that don't have the support and McMillan definitely supported my stepdad. It mm. enabled me and my mum to still go to work every day and knowing McMillan would pop in, do their bit. Mm. And there's many people that don't have... Brian's not had to use McMillan. He's, he used it for the counselling, but he's not had to fully use their service because he's lucky that he has myself, he has his brothers and sisters, and they're a very close family. Mm. But there's so many people that don't mm. have that extra level mm. of support when they're going through cancer. And Macmillan is really there for every need, not just for just that. They can do when it's will writing. They they do a range of services, like which I don't think breaks. people yeah. are aware yeah, of. Sure and do. cancer research, get loads of money every year, cancer research, yeah. but Macmillan struggles with doing the coffee mornings and, st and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it does <clears throat> hold dearly to my heart having Macmillan um, and the fact that we could be helping other people <clears throat> get through their challenges as well but i do think it's something that we should give back as a community yeah. and i think a year yeah. thing wouldn't wouldn't hurt I'd well i'm sure me. you know on behalf of set the trend um we're happy to um contribute something towards your event that's, that's yeah. recorded yeah, <laughs> that's recorded. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. thank you yeah. no do you know what for me yeah. another reason why i want to i'm being so vocal what it is cancer affects black people more higher than any race out there in the world. Mm. I don't know. I, I don't know why us black people we're getting it more than like white, black, Indian. I don't know. I just don't know. But something like it, something about it is black people. Mm -hmm. I get the high rate in cancer. Black people is far Food. higher than any. But you're a three time champion. Is it? I mean, there's not many people who could could beat mm. cancer three. once, mm. let alone mm. three times. Mm. Um, mm. I mean, the, it, it's very, it's very heartwarming hearing. Mm you talk about it and bringing the story out because obviously mm. there's people out there that will probably see it or in the mm. same position but don't know how to deal with it mm. themselves in a worse position yeah. they haven't got a strong person yeah. um, a strong wife mm. um, who is next to them who's going to be there 24 they may not know how to deal with it mm. Sandra's yeah. had at least she's had a little time to yeah. deal with it so yeah. I, I, I think it's good that you're talking about it yeah. I think probably with the charity thing it's from my point of view it's probably still Brian you know what I mean? In mm. in, in, in we need mm. to probably involve more of um, the DJs and promoters um, that are around to help you mm. with it. You know what I'm saying? To you because mm. it it it's not just a brand thing. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you've hit the nail right on the head. And I've been out of because it's the first time we're doing this. It is. It's a learning thing. There's probably things that we could do better. We can't because it's it's you know just like anything. When you do something new, when you probably look at it. The next year you could see where you've gone wrong or upon reflection you should have done this so it's still a learning i think i think there are lots of things missing but it is all i'm doing out there is just pleading mm. with everyone just help us yeah. do you mm. know what i mean and it's not and you know it's not about me it's, mm. it's about all of us because i have, I have reached out to idea. a couple of artists so one has definitely confirmed brian isn't aware of that yet i'm just waiting for the second one to confirm and then, then i'll announce it as well and the artist that has confirmed has provided services for free as well Good. So. If we don't go, we got, I don't see time goes, doesn't it? I told it you does. the time goes, doesn't it? it does. <laughs> Reggie, yeah, can yeah. you give them the cards? They've got the cards. These are um, the diary of a CEO cards, oh and then God. they've got go on. Is, is just, take, her, no, yeah? just hold it out to them, and they've just got to take one and hand oh. it back. Oh. Oh. And, so, then I'll, and then I'll ask them the question. Do you remember this little long. trick that Maxine used to do? Take a card, any card. You remember, yeah, Max and our daily departure. Different though. I know. Yeah, oh, no, I've got tech one. I, I have it, yeah, and yeah. you, Brian. And can no, I have the card back? No, this no, one's a fake. Read it. You can't read it. Oh, oh, so I didn't even get to fully read it. I ain't got my glasses on, so you're lucky. No, no, I just. No, I didn't get to read it. I ain't got my glasses on. Oh, you might. Right, we're So, Sandra, what would you do if you absolutely weren't afraid? Is there anything that you would do if you weren't absolutely afraid? So, afraid. Friday and Friday wasn't kicking in. What would you do? Um, what would I do if I wasn't afraid? So I'm not scared of heights, but then, yeah, I probably would like to do like an abseil or something like that, to be honest with you. But I'm mm -hmm. not, oh, I don't really like animals, so maybe, <laughs> yeah, I'm not great with animals. I don't know, I've never, that's a hard one, isn't it? What would I do if I wasn't afraid? Hmm. Um, we'll take abseiling. 
We'll take yeah. absolutely for now. Something like that. Yeah. Brian, <sighs> what is the one belief or behavior that has positively impacted your life in the past 12 months? Oh, wow. Wow. Um, Jesus Christ. To be honest with you, I think I told you. Hey. Do you know what? Um, I'll say that because. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting paid for this anyway. Uh, I'm getting a nice quick dinner. Do you know what? I'll be honest with you, I, I can't think of any woman would be, with what I've been through, I'm not using the cancer excuses, but I want a nice person. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've, put it out there, I've put it out there on the radio, what, who I was, and Mr. Nasty. I can't think of anybody, any woman would probably go through what I've put them through. And I'd say, I just... It's funny because when when I watched the um, what I did last summer when Junior from Lightning was on there with his prostate cancer, do you know the program I'm talking about? It was on. You still can pick it oh, up. Oh yeah, um, uh, Junior Mac. Junior Mac. Yeah, oh, they had that when he story. Had the pro- yeah, the program, yeah, 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 yeah. And there was a yeah. there was one Rest of in the peace. yeah, yeah mm. and one of the women on there who was on there as well going through her cancer. Her husband left her. Yes, and I right. would always say I, just, I don't understand anyone that has the heart to mm. do that at that point when somebody's mm. at probably their their worst, at their most vulnerable. Mm. How anyone could just walk away, step away at that point, and I and it it wouldn't even contemplate me. No matter how much Brian is self destruct, self destroying, to step mm. away and walk away at that point. Mm. I just I just don't know how any, anyone would have the heart. Adversity really brings out. The mm-hmm. true yeah. person, and I remember yeah. it so well. Yeah. That woman saying, mm-hmm. "Oh, he he left her," and I was like, "My God, you know." Okay, let's go again. We've got oh, time for another sorry. one. Sorry, so oh, you know how to do it this time, Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just it, don't read it. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> she tried to read it there. <laughs> yeah. I read she hasn't got glasses on, so it don't matter anyway. Oh, okay. That's Think of my spectacles. Oh, this is good. This is a good one for Sandra. Yeah. I like this one. I think Brian will Brian will appreciate this one. But no, so Sandra. What's a common misconception people have about you and how does it make you feel? They don't like me. <laughs> That's a very good and question. And I'm not going to lie. I, said to Brian, I always say to Brian, I don't know what it is with your girlfriend, you know. I don't know what the problem is coming through the door that they can't. Because one thing about me, all I, all I expect you to do is just say hello or smile. Mm-hmm. And they come through the door and just like blankly like, you've been to the dance. And I physically know you come into the dance over and over again. You don't say hello. You don't even like hi or nothing. Is it the same people all the time? It it can be. It, right? Yeah, it can be. But I I know <laughs> that I do have a, a resting face that is just like. Is that a promoter's face straight? No, you, well Ray has it because you. Because <laughs> <laughs> then but, but, but many times you don't really see Ray laugh a lot in it or smile. So I remember yeah, even in water, right, right, right. I had the video thinking, "Wow, Ray's dancing." Do you okay. know what I mean? Oh but, yeah, do you remember that? Yeah, but I do. I know I do have a resting set face, which people probably think, "Oh, she's just vexed." But I just mm. naturally just business, business. Just, yeah, mm. and when you're when you're busy, sometimes you don't see the obvious when you are busy. People are just like, "I got time for that." Kind of thing, but yeah, Focus. I think people take me the wrong way at times. If I'm honest with you. He says to me, I'm always miserable. I'm like, I ain't miserable. If you're busy, you're busy, isn't it? But um, I ain't miserable. Thank you, Sanj. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Yeah. Who was the first person who believed in you? Um, bro, if, if the distribution shied, um, Jerry Bascom. Big up, Jerry. Yeah. yeah um, the old mate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, the promote inside, myself. Really, mm-hmm. that's why I called it. That that's why yeah. I called it me, myself, and mm-hmm. I. Um, and I think, I think the reason why I'm here today is because of the resilience. So mm-hmm. I just say me. Sorry, son, not you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you see um, me, myself, and I in five years' time? Where would you like to be? Do you know what? It's so good weird. Question. I don't. It's a good question. Um, she she wants to she no, wants no, to, she, you want it's to. Not, no, 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 it's not that I don't I want to give right. up on it. It's Pretty not that. S- yeah. I keep saying to Brian, if you're still promoting at the age you are, at what age what is your what is the age group that you're still gonna be promoting for if you're do you get know what I mean? Do you know That's what? what I think I think I will stop when people stop coming to my events. 
I think as long as I'm... when they're in their Zimmer frames then and we're doing sit-down dancing. <laughs> Do you know what? I think as long as I'm giving people value for money, I'll carry on. Because you, you know when that, that time Sounds comes good. when people stop supporting your events and I think that's, that'd be the time for me to stop. Do you know what, Brian? I think that's, that's the best point to end this podcast on. And what I'm so proud of you there is that you didn't mention, you didn't even know if you was going to be around. You yeah, got it yeah. in your mindset that you're around for as long as it takes. Mm. And that mm. I applaud. Love that. Mm. Thanks. Me, myself and I, Sandra Roadrunner, Brian Roadrunner. <laughs> Thank you for coming on Set the Trend Brilliant. Podcast. Brilliant podcast. And setting the yeah. record straight and talking about um, your, your cancer. Thank, thank you for that. No, so thank that's, you. That's great stuff. Much appreciated, yeah? guys. Thank you. Have you got any socials? Um, have you got any socials? Instagram well, or Facebook? Just, or Facebook? That's, yeah, that's your department. Is, uh, me, myself and I has Instagram. We also have Mortar Experience on Facebook. Um, myself, Sandra Stewart on Facebook. Brian Joseph on Facebook. Yeah. And Instagram. Or just get a flyer pack. Or just get a flyer pack. <laughs> <laughs> See you at Yeah. yeah. Get a flyer pack. Thanks a lot. Thank you for coming, for listening to Set the Trend podcast. Um, everything culture, street culture, and every show has been different. And this one, is, again, has been different this week. Thank you for coming. Thank you, board. guys. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right, we'll see you on the next episode um, with more gems, dropping some more gems for you, um, and definitely recording history, talking historical events. Set the Trend podcast. We're out of here. Peace.